Hello friend, we have quite a task ahead of us today. We are going to create a full page doodle. If you've ever seen the work of Pete Candle, it is inspired by what she does. This is what I started doing very early on uh, when I got interested in kawaii. So today we are going to create a complete doodle and of course add some bubble lettering to satisfy my lettering and graffiti itch in this project. This is really, really cool if you want to do something like coloring pages. Can you imagine creating a set of these full page illustrations and then having all the little details and everything to color in? That, that could make a really cool coloring page. This can also, of course, be used for product design, like epic t-shirts. Uh, it can be used for textile and it can be used as background elements like so if you create a full page illustration without the hero text like i have done here but just a collage of all the different characters then you can easily drop some more uh, front and featured characters in front of it and that could look really really cool if you want to have a look at example of a brand that I think does really well, in fact, I'm actually wearing one of their t-shirts right now, totally unplanned, but the brand is Toki Doki, Toki Doki. Uh, I'll link, so everything I mentioned in the video, I'll link it in the uh, description next to the video so that you can check it out. So if you go to their website, tokidoki.it, you'll see a whole collection of characters and merge and how like fun ways that they applied as a textile and as t-shirts and they have vinyl toys. So check it out, you won't regret it. I started creating these full page illustrations way back in the day and I documented the process of me learning how to do this on my website at tatianadenis.com. And then I went ahead and created a little mini course that basically summarizes what we are doing here today in depth, but it's like a very streamlined version of it. So if you want to check that out, tatianadenis.com forward slash mini course. It's totally free. You can grab it and have fun with it. And the interesting thing is there aren't that many artists that are creating this type of illustrations, even though they look striking. And perhaps it's because there is quite a bit of uh, technique involved and thinking and actually time in doing this, as you will see in this tutorial today, because we are going to take it step by step by step. We're going to do the whole thing in this one tutorial. I don't yet know how we're going to compress it all, but we'll make it happen. So because I was creating them and posting, actually Quarto Publishing had found my work and have commissioned me to create a full a year calendar using this illustration. So I did 13 full page illustrations for them. You know, Quarto Publishing, that was such a cool, cool, cool project. I had so much fun and I invite you to master this skill and also become noticed and create something fun and beautiful. Uh, and something that you would really enjoy and feel proud of. Now, this tutorial was originally requested by Cynthia Dixon of our Kawaii Drawing Club and Elisa of the Kawaii Drawing Club as well on a separate occasion. And it has taken me a whole year to finally arrive at this moment of recording this tutorial. Again, you will see why, but here we are, we are doing it now and we are gonna have fun with it. The other thing, uh, another little fun fact story is that at some point, Cynthia, she was making comments in the community and I said something along the lines of, you know, keep going, the world really needs your art and da 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 da. And she, she noticed that phrase, the world needs your art. And she said, Tatiana, you've got to make a poster with it. And I said, yes, you've got it. I believe this was at the very beginning of the Kawaii Drawing Club. And guess what? In this tutorial, I am combining these two requests. We are going to make a poster that says the world needs your art because it does. And we are going to put the doodle around the text and make the text the hero feature of this design. Let us get going. I am going to use Procreate for this tutorial. Uh, it does help to have digital tools. However, you can just as well do this on paper with a pencil. 
you know, this is not specifically about procreate. This is about composition, character design, layout, decoration, and mainly about how to create a full, create a full page kawaii doodle. If this is the first time you're doing something like this, just copy what I'm doing. Don't worry about it too much. And if you're a little bit more advanced, maybe walk, uh, watch through the lesson and then try to use your own characters, uh, maybe your own design, your own lettering and create something unique to you. I'm super excited to get going and to see what you will create. Step one, set up the canvas. So we've opened up the Procreate app and uh, I've already, I already have a folder for this project, but we're gonna go ahead and create another one so that you can see the entire process. So we'll go ahead and create a new canvas. Now, what size? I am thinking that I want this to be a poster and the poster, like quite a large poster. So I wanna go for an A3 size and I'll turn, turn it this way. Now here is the consideration. My iPad is pretty, it's about a year old. So with this size, I will still get quite a few layers. Uh, let's check it out. So we'll go to the range tool for the menu. We'll go to canvas and we'll go to canvas information. So let's look at dimensions. And uh, since we already selected the A3 size, and it's got 300 dpi for print, which is the minimum you want to have. Ideally, I would have 600, but in this case, it's just not an option. So Procreate had set the size already correctly, and it's telling me that I have a maximum of 56 layers, which is pretty good for this project. But the reason why you see so many different versions here uh, in my folder is partially because I was running out of layers and I had to keep merging the layers. So I would keep creating a new file. So there's like five different sketches uh, so that I could keep all of the layers. So, but we're gonna be brave and aim to do this all in one <laughs> layer. <laughs> this is a big project, like I said to you. Uh, so we've got our canvas, the right size. And I want it to be vertical like this. I want it to be a vertical poster for this project. And uh, now we are sitting in front of the proverbial, proverbial blank canvas. What's next? Okay, so we said we're doing a full page doodle and we are going to have some text here that says the world needs your art. Okay, that's something we can work with. Now, Remember that text is just shapes. So in a composition like this, text is just another character you can say. So the words, the world, the world needs your art. I envision this as being on four different lines. And uh, look, this is a really, really big project. And this is not a lettering tutorial. This is a doodle, full page doodle tutorial. So I'll go ahead and skip you know, the, the text version, but I will show you my process. So this is how I started out. You know, I just wrote out the words, the world needs your art. And then I tried different combinations. Like here, I put needs as really big and here I made it sort of the same size. Then I tried to put it in the little border right here, you know, maybe. So I was envisioning the doodle to go like all the way edge to edge, you know, what would that look like? And I just copy and pasted the same doodle to, to test this, right? Then I tried it under an angle. Then I tried it uh, without the background, you know, like just thinking, what is the key word here? Is it the art? Is it the needs? Is it the world? So I'm playing with the different sizes of the words to determine the hierarchy. And you know what, like at this point, I think I've decided like this looks the best, I'm just gonna go with this. But at this point, I always push myself to say, what else can you come up with? Go and do three more versions, you know, just like you have your winning design, there's no pressure. So go ahead and just whip up something else. So then I copied it over three more times and I started to just play around with like, without attachment to the outcome. You can see that these are pretty uptight, let's say. <laughs> 
And then this is where I started to be really loose and playing with it. So I thought, oh, what if I put like a background on it? What if I put little charms and things? And then here I thought, oh, Tatiana, you know you love graffiti. Like, just go for it. So I started to bend the words, so not even going on a grid. And I really like that. But what I didn't like in this design is that the world, being a dark background, was taking up so much attention of the design. Because the objective here is maybe your art. Like, your art is, is the star here. So then I thought, okay, let me just not draw so much attention to the world. Word, and then your art be becomes the star. So that was where I arrived. And I thought, oh gosh, I really like this design. So then I actually even started to block in some shapes and see what would this look like with shapes. And this is the part where I said, okay, this is actually working. And then I would copy and paste this into a new file and start developing it further. Step two, select your characters. So we said that text is just a shape and we have our winning sketch. So all I did was I copy and pasted into a new file and then I've sort of went around and sketched out the shape of the text. I'm not even finalizing the text yet, but I just kind of laid it out. And if I want to test it, I can make it really small and make sure everything still works. And then I can sort of turn it upside down and make sure it's all still balanced. Like you can imagine these beans balancing on each other and they don't feel like they're going to fall over. So that's really important for composition. We've got the text, but now we need the actual characters, right? So since this is not a character design tutorial, otherwise we would be here for, I don't know, I think this drawing took me probably between 15 and 20 hours. You probably don't wanna be here for 15 hours. So we'll just shortcut this process. And I thought it would be really cool to uh, use some of the characters that our Kawaii Drawing Club members have created. Um, so every week we have the Draw This Week prompt and for last week or whatever, recent week, we had the prompt of Funny Punny. So I went into the community and I pulled down everyone's drawings who made an entry for Draw This Week for that week and uh, I am using them for this full page doodle. So it's kind of like a co-creation project in the making. Now, it's really good to have a theme to these drawings. So let me demonstrate to you what I mean. Uh, the, the drawing model that I used here for the sketch is actually all kinds of different popsicles. So you see they're different ice creams and they create this interesting shapes. So you have a rounded shape here and a pointy shape here. So on the one hand, you want some variety. On the other hand, you want a cohesive theme. Now, I'm giving myself a bit of a challenge here because besides being a punny drawing, there's not really a cohesive theme going on. But, you know, I want to show you the extreme. We can make it happen. So let's go for it. Now, here's what I pulled down. Let's see. This is uh, Ice Cream by, Cynthia, uh, by Cindy Carlson. Then we have One in the Melon by Tabby Armstrong. So these are the images we'll be using. Then we have Butter Together by yours truly, Tatiana Dennis. Pickled Pink by Cynthia Dixon. Then we have Sundays Are My Jam by Angela Marie. Get it? Sundays, the flower. So cool. Then we have uh, Mike the Grain coming in strong with not your average artist, and he certainly is not. Then Francisca treated us with some llamas. Uh, and Rivika Anand gave us, you mean a latte to me. So I'm going to be using these cups. And then Martin Sachs had come up with this, I love you furry much drawing. <laughs> so cute. So that's coming in as well. And Erin Hansen has come up with, so fishticated. I love that. So gorgeous. And Ad, Ed, sorry, Ed has created Order in the Court. Very cool. Yeah, so this is kind of like, this was my process. So I brought in all these drawings uh, and then started to compose 
the doodle. So let's see the full process. So I, I took screenshots of my process because obviously this has already passed, uh, but I, I wanna be able to show you everything. So I brought into the Procreate all these drawings that I just showed you. So my next step, so this is another view of the drawings just side by side. I kind of wanted to get a sense of, you know, the different shapes. So, because like, if you remember in the sketch, we had some pointy shapes, we had some triangular shapes, some round shapes. So I've kind of laid them out and assessing what am I going to use and how. So the next step, it was for me to redraw these characters. So I took my trusty pencil. So this is, oh, I'm not in Procreate, but I'll show you my pencil. Uh, you can grab my brushes, the same brushes that I use as a uh, download below the video. So I took my pencil and I redrew the characters. Now, why am I redrawing them? Because it is really important that there is consistency in the style. Uh, I didn't, I copied the characters, but I did sort of aim to Tatianify them a little bit. Why? Because <laughs> Tatianify, is that a technical term? Because we want to have a sort of cohesiveness to the illustration. Because these are drawings by many different people, uh, I wanted to have the consistent line, face style, um, just the quality of the line of these characters. So that was my process. I brought them in and then this is something important as well. I went ahead and pulled out a few decorative elements that were in these drawings that I could possibly use later, like little shines, little accent marks, notes. You know, this is like an FYI for myself for later. Now that all the characters are ready, we can, we can proceed to the layout. Step three, block out the big shapes. So here are all the characters redrawn in Procreate. So I've got them all on separate layers here and uh, we've already decided what the text will look like. Let's revisit our sketch right here. So that's the original sketch we brought in and I, I reduced the opacity so that I can see the new stuff that I'm drawing on top of it. So I don't know, mine is set to 23%. That sounds good to me. Uh, and I've already done the text because that's just filling in those big bubble shapes that we have put on top of it, right? So let me turn on the text. So all I did is that I filled the bubble shapes with the actual letters uh, and I put some white inside of it so that the characters that I'm laying out right now uh, are not showing through the text because that becomes really distracting. And this is where the blood, sweat and tears begin with doing the full page doodle. Uh, even with the characters already here, now we've got to shape and mold them into this cohesive design. So let's just, you know, roll up the sleeves and go for it. I'll switch on all of the character layers and start moving them one by one. And I'll talk you through my thought process of why I'm putting things where and you know like what are the considerations so let's just start from the top there's no specific order right so i'll pick the first one and i will think where will it go so i already have you see there's like a shadow of the overall shape that i came up with and it's not anything like specific i just looked for a variety variety while maintaining the balance so like a rounded shape on this side and a pointy shape on this side. So I'm, I'm going to sort of follow that guideline shadow over there and I'm just gonna put this here. And believe me, at this point, I have already tested many, many variations and um, I've, I've moved things around a lot, you know? So for example, right now, what I could do is take this watermelon and put it right here because it's kind of pointy. So let's try that. Let's try that. So that in theory looks pretty good. However, right now this is actually creating a vector, like a pointing vector for the eye to fall out of the picture. So let's say my eye is here 
here it might get caught up on this and boo, it goes out of the corner we really do not want that to happen no that's a no so it's not really working in this position in this position so let's move it out some other place uh, where it's not going to be pointing outwards but I still want to capture all of the adorableness of this little watermelon so I want to make sure that we get these cute eyes and everything so I'm going to put it right here as a stopper to the eye so instead of being a ramp to take the eye off the composition it's now a stopper so the, the eye is reading the world needs then it reaches this cutie and then goes right back inside your art so I'm happy with that position let's take the next one um, so another thing to consider here is that I want to be putting smaller elements on top and bigger elements on the bottom because it looks better when things are grounded and they feel stable to the eye so bigger shapes should go on the bottom so for example the way that the llama is sitting here is actually pretty nice so let's leave it here and we have an option we can keep it straight up like this or we can sort of tilt things up and down uh, and originally I kind of did tilt things up and down like you can see that this ice cream was pointing upwards this ice cream is pointing downwards so let's continue with that idea it'll create the drawing that is really dynamic uh, and I also like really like this bunny which is sending love which is cool maybe we can put him front and center now here I'm already thinking to myself so which one is in the front, the llama or the bunny? So I'll decide that later. But the important thing is that the stacking order of how you put your characters has to make sense. So for example, uh, a llama, let's say if a llama is on top here, right? But there is an element that is tucking under the bunny and maybe has a long arm. That arm cannot be in front of the llama because that's not really physically possible if one is underneath and the other one is on top, right? So imagine that each of these characters is a paper cutout and you are putting them on your desk and you are moving them around. This is how I always think about it and this is how I present it in the mini course that I told you about. Um, so that's kind of how I'm going to do it here as well but right now I'm just doing the composition not really worrying about the order we'll we'll talk about that later so you see I'm kind of following the shape that was there so I'm pretty happy with this uh, let's get something happening over here I'm not sure what to put there yet so when in doubt keep going <laughs> I don't know what to put here so in fact I might just take the text off because I don't even remember what we've allocated okay so this guy is pretty striking let's grab him the so fish ticketed guy and where are you here you are and move him up somewhere so this you see it's actually a very nice shape kind of matches this shape that we have here but the challenge again is that it's taking the eye out of the picture but I found a simple solution for this I'm just gonna flip it horizontal and now it's actually drawing the eye back into the picture so we can put him next to the cups and we just have to decide how tall because we don't want to shift the balance of the picture this way right depends what we are going to end up putting here but it's got to be something quite substantial in order to offset the stuff that is happening on this side uh, let me move the ice cream out of the way because it's confusing ice cream here you go in fact ice cream will stick you right under here because we already know that works from the sketch so ice cream can go here okay now let's get to this sophisticated guy here you are and you can see that there's a lot happening with the fins so the way that I position him 
I'm thinking, is he in front of the cup or behind? What are the parts that are going to get cut off? And will it still still tell the story of the art? Uh, so maybe I'll choose to put him in front of the cup. So if he's in front of the cup, it's overlapping this way. Then maybe this cup can be in front of this cup. So they're kind of like in order, you know, so that it's always looking balanced. I guess balance is the theme here. <laughs> um, okay, who is next? This flower is quite striking as well. So let's actually put it right here. It's a nice shape and it'll balance out the side. Here you are. And we'll put you right here. Right here like that. Nice. Maybe a little bit bigger because this side is quite, is looking already quite busy. So we'll put you right here. And the pancakes. Oh, look, there's like a nice shape already. So maybe the pancakes can fit right in there. Like that. Make sure that we can actually see the... Uh, the face so whatever I position with again I'm thinking is the pancake in front of the flower or behind right so and this wouldn't really work if we cannot see the face and at least some of these drips otherwise we just don't know what's going on in there oh and I made a booboo -boo. okay cool no problem so okay so that's almost half of the characters allocated Let's figure out where to put this guy, the Nacho uh, Average Artist. And again, we have the triangular shape. So I would not put it this way. I would probably want to put it this way. So that it's actually clo like closing the vector of the eye to fall out. So I'm going to put him right here. You see how it's framing? Everything is framing the text right there and here I want to make sure that we can see the brush and the drips because that's the story of this specific illustration let's check how it's working with the text yeah okay so I need to move it out over a little bit there we go so now we can see the brush and the drips while still working with the text now this is looking messy right there the boombox will move you over Move you over uh, here, here, maybe here. This sounds good. This would be like a nice balance to all of the roundness right here. So we might need to move the cup, uh, the pancakes down then because now it's looking too busy. So, and that's the work here. Adjust, adjust, adjust. I want, I want pretty much all the space around the text to be filled with characters and I want everything to look very balanced. So yeah, this is looking pretty good. This is now starting to look like it has a dip. So I might bring up the cups a little bit more because look, if we zoom out, can you tell there's like a little bit of a dip? So I might just do that. Nice. Okay, let us continue. So now we've got the llama. We've got we've got this pickled pink still unaccounted for. So let's grab that pickle. And again, I want to make sure that we're getting the story of this pickle. This would make a really good position. You see how the characters are just kind of like uh, rounding around but we don't see the face but maybe what we'll do is that we'll just move the face over so I know it's looking busy but just bear with me here <laughs> um, in fact what we can do is uh, behind every character we can go ahead go ahead and drop a white background so that we know what is in front of what and we can start to make sense of it. So let's do that. 
This is going to be a little bit tedious, so I'm going to time lapse this part because otherwise we'll be here for a very long time. But basically, all I'm doing is that below every character, I'm dropping a white fill. Okay, so now all the characters have a white uh, background to them, uh, ending with our pickle. So now I can actually see where the face is and I'm going to move it up because the place where I want this character to show up in the doodle is where we're only going to see the top section of this drawing. So why don't we just do this and that would be already really, really cute. I think this is good. And we'll have to erase some of the texture here, which is okay. You know, we don't really want texture around the eyes because we want it to be clear where the face is. So we'll just erase that. And now it should work more, better, <laughs> better. Okay, let's test it out. Move it way up here. And I think it's working. Let's just make sure that we can see enough of this cutie to really understand uh, the character. Okay, this is good. And the only thing that is kind of missing is this area right here. And we've kind of ran out of characters. So, but we still have got our order in the court skunk. So let's put him over there. Uh, and then we can do this thing of filling out the gaps. Anything that's missing, we can use textural elements to fill out the gaps. So what we can do right here. So the skunk is in a good position. Like I don't really want him to be front and center, you know, but I want him to be visible. So I can surround him with, uh, let's say, less detailed... Um, or less variety characters. So I quite like this flower as a decorative element that we can repeat throughout the illustration to create some kind of a cohesiveness. So any place where there is a gap or something missing, we can now uh, add a flower. So let us do that. So I'll just duplicate that layer and bring it down here. Check this out. So something like this maybe it'll be very pretty to have that flower behind the llama but we gotta send it all the way to the back definitely these decorative elements go in the back no question about it and then we need to do that one more maybe a little bit more inwards so that you see now we are creating this nice wave so it kind of goes up and down and up and down and you know so there's like a nice flow to it all throughout uh, this could be a little deep so if I make it really small I can evaluate the overall layout but we are almost there I'm not really concerned with anything behind the text because by the time I've outlined the text and thickened the background we won't see anything showing up in here and if there are any little gaps I can use this flower and just put it underneath it as a textural element and that would just close off the gaps. So that's the hot tip. If you have any gaps, fill it up with texture. So at this point, we can take off our original sketch just to have more clarity. And I would also change the background color to something not white. <laughs> this is actually really cool. This looks really, really cool. So maybe we go with the color like that, maybe a bit darker just for contrast because we want to have a nice contrast here. Uh, but I can now see more of the compositional elements. Maybe I'll make the text bigger. So this is basically rebalancing because after this step, we are committing to this layout and to change anything would be really, really hard. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so 
let's make sure that everything is where it needs to be. I think there is a little bit of a disbalance here. So how, how do I know that? You see, if I make this really small, can you see it's kind of like falling off on this side? It's kind of like falling out. Uh, and also if I turn it upside down too, I can see a lot going on here and not so much going on here. So actually what we could do is we could put another flower in this area um, or we could move this guy or we could do both. So let's do both. So maybe make it a little bit bigger, balance it out. This is actually nice because it's coming in front of the cup, which is okay. So it'll still tell the story of the character, no problem. Um, let's see, maybe turn it a little bit more, you know, make it a little bit bigger. I wanna close out that gap. And then we've got our pickled pink, nice. And the watermelon, okay, so. Make sure we can see that cute face. <laughs> Maybe move it out. Yeah, this is nice. This is like a nice little area for the face and the watermelon. I'm gonna bring in a little bit. You see like there's another little nook for the face. So maybe I'll move it here. Make sure we can see the face without losing detail. And now I have a little bit of a dip on this side, which I can fill up with a flower. So once we do the outline, um, then everything will change yet again. So we're just checking, you know, making sure that all of the overlapping is correct. Like, for example, the pancake is on top of the radio. The radio is on top of the flower. The flower is at the back. So now if the cup was behind the flower, that would look wrong, right? Because the flower is a background element. So I wanna make sure that the cup is on top of the flower. So that's looking good. This cup is in the front. This sophisticated guy is in front, yep. Uh, so the pickled pink is in front of the flower. Good, good. Um, maybe this nacho guy is kind of getting lost in the back because he's falling under the watermelon and under the ice cream. So I wanna bring him to the front. So let's do that. Bring him above the ice cream. So now, but now he's also above the watermelon. So I want the watermelon on top. Okay, so one side is cutting off, the other one is totally visible. And I want this side to be visible because this is where the drops are, right? I wanna make sure that we can see the paint drips. So I might just move him down a bit. Now with a bunny, I kind of like, there's quite a bit of the face getting cut off with this pointy shape. So I might tuck the ice cream underneath the bunny like that. So we can still see all of the ice cream, but we also get the definition of the bunny. So the bunny's ears go under the text, but that's okay. We can still see him in front of the llama. Okay, good. I think everything else looks fine. Step four, outline your drawing. Now, the next step is again, a very long and tedious one. What we, what's, you know, the task in front of us is now to go through and outline all the characters. And it literally is about looking at what's here and, you know, creating an outline carefully, painstakingly, so I'll spare you the process. But I will tell you one thing though, you, what you wanna do is keep in mind the thickness of the outline. So to do the outline for this drawing, I used my smooth outline brush, which you can download where you're watching this video. And what I did is I have set up three line widths right here. So when you select a certain width, you can tap it uh, tap the brush and you see the little plus if you click on it it actually creates a bookmark for the size of that brush so for this drawing I had three bookmarks 27% 20% and 12% so the 27% which is quite thick and let me make another layer 
yeah and we are gonna do it purple so I chose to just outline it purple you can do it black you can do it any color but you can see that this is a rather thick outline uh, oh and the other thing I would do before doing the outline is add a layer of white in front of the entire picture and then we'll reduce the opacity of it. So we'll make it semi-transparent so that I can still see my sketch, but it's not getting in the way. Okay, so purple, we've got per loaded brush with purple. That's smooth outline brush. We've got the biggest size, 27%. And that's the one that I wanna outline the hero of this illustration with which is the text the message the world needs your art so i'll do a little bit and then i'll you know you'll get the point so so that's kind of you know what i would do for the text outline the whole thing go through with the thickest outline but then if i'm doing little details like like these little guys you see the insides of the uh, radio. So even to do the radio itself, I would probably use, not probably, I would use the middle thickness of the outline. So it's a little bit thinner. And then to do the internal parts, I would use my thinnest outline and do these elements right here. So that's kind of the only thing to keep in mind when doing the outlines. You can actually choose to do everything same width. Becky Cass, a very, very beautiful artist, she just uses one outline thickness for everything, which sounds amazing because it's so efficient and it looks gorgeous, you know? But I like to stick to three. So my magic number is three thicknesses. This kind of looks like a face, don't you think? The radio looks like a face. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's something to keep in mind. So I'll go ahead and skip to the part where it's all outlined so that we can add the decorations and bring it to completion. Step five, add texture and decorations. So here's the outlined version of our full page doodle. This has taken me hours. <laughs> so we just skip ahead and you can see that the text is the thickest right and i also went ahead and filled in with black basically all the little spaces in between and that knocked out any detail that would be underneath it and it's you see like if you look at it right now the first thing that you see in this whole illustration is the text is the message is the focal point um, and i kind of want to keep it like that uh, and then all the other characters have that slightly thinner outline. Uh, but it's looking, I mean, it's looking nice, but it could be more interesting. Besides the text and the characters, there's not much for the eye to sort of explore, right? So um, what I did is I went ahead and I added cheeks for the characters. And even though this is like a two color art, I, I chose to bring in pink for the cheeks. So you see some of the characters have cheeks. It just gives them a bit of life and a, li a little bit of a oomph, you can say. Um, I don't know, I like it. So you can also choose to selectively color certain elements or you could even fully render all of the characters and do the drop shadows and that would look so, so, so gorgeous. I'll actually show you a reference that I found incredibly inspiring for this project. And I felt like, ooh, I wanna do art like that. Check this one out. So this is a fully rendered doodle. Uh, I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. And you can see how they've used the textures and the shadows. Um, so that's something to experiment with. Okay, so this is ours, but we are going this, we're doing this as line art a little bit like in peak candle style. Um, but we can still take it further. So the other thing I did is add some white shines in the eyes. Check out the eyes. You see like the little dots and things in the eyes. Uh, and finally, the other thing I added 
is some texture. Okay, so it's texture and charms. So here we go. Remember like uh, the notes that I took while sketching of these little elements, like there's notes, there is uh, little bursts, hearts and dots. So I'm pretty much using all of those little elements to go from a pretty plain drawing, which is like this, you know, it's pretty vanilla to being an explosion of fun and a feast for the eye and so much to explore. So let's like analyze what goes where in this case. So, you know, the notes were easy to position because they go next to the boombox and the little accent marks, there is not really a science to it here. I just, I put them where there were little gaps because this edge looked a bit dull. So I just put the little triangular accent marks in the edges and I kind of, so you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to randomly space them out and position the same thing. It will kind of look boring, you know? You don't want to have more than three things in a row that are the same. This is one of those rules from fine art days. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I did. And then there's the hearts. It's basically, again, there was like a little dip in here. So I said, oh, okay, this pickled pink is so sweet and adorable. I'm gonna put little hearts in here. Uh, and another little accent mark. And then I brought in these little bubbles because putting accent marks all around was starting to be too monotonous. So this, I just brought in this nice little shape. It's like a water drop and it's inspired partially by graffiti and paint splats, partially by folk art, you know, like the little leaves. I just really like that shape and I use it a lot in my art. Um, so here it is again, and here it is again. Um, yeah, so that's the edge decoration. And the only other thing I did is that, let me take off the decorations and I'll show you. Okay, so the other thing I did is I added more black or more dark areas to the drawing, because if you look at it right now, it's all very much monotonous. If you think of this as a music piece, it's all the same notes in the same key, right? Da -da 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 We want to have variety, ups and downs. So we want to bring in some dark areas, not just here, but in other places. I have a texture collection, which will be linked next to the video, where you can get ideas for the kinds of textures to bring in. But again, it's not really like a specific science. It's more like what will look good. Uh, you can look at Zentangle for ideas as well. But the idea is to now bring in more dark areas. So look at the drawing. Where could you possibly add more darks? Where does it make sense? So for example, the top hat can easily become dark. Let's call it black. It's not black, it's purple, but let's say black, right? Dark without sacrificing any of the story. Like I couldn't make the shark dark because then we would lose the eyes and everything. We're only working with two tones here, but I can easily make the hat. So that's one example. The other thing is I can add stripes to the cup and that would make it interesting. Uh, I could put polka dots on the llama, right? Like the same way that the pickle has these little bumps, the llama can have dots or it could have the little bumps as well because it's so furry. Um, so that, that was my thought process when selecting different dark areas. And this is the result. So you can see I made the hat dark. I made some stripes. I added some coffee in here. And then inside the flowers, you know, I also played around with different textures. It was looking like a little bit plain and we were getting lost in the sense of the different layers of the flower. So that's why I just did these ones dark, these ones with the little uh, texture, and then the back ones are just plain because we see the least detail at the back. That's another, like one of those rules of thumb, least de detail at the back. Uh, we've got the polka dots, 
yeah, just basically colored in the ears of the animals, colored in the mouth, wherever I could see the parts that could be darker, I did that. But like, it just makes such a huge difference. This is without, and this is with the texture and the finishing elements. And of course, the very final piece that I really urge you to do is to sign your work. So here I sign it as Tatiana Dennis right on top of my own character. <laughs> um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this journey. It's quite a journey. And now you know how, like all the steps, you know, all the steps in producing something like this. It's involved, but it's totally doable. It's a lot of work. But when you know the process, it's totally, totally doable. Let me know your thoughts. Did you enjoy it? Did you find it challenging? How do you feel? Do you feel apprehensive? You know, do you feel excited to jump in and do your own version? Let me know your thoughts and impressions in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Wow, what a journey. We made it. I really, really want to see what you will create and how you will respond to this prompt. Share your drawings in the community. If you are at the Kawaii Drawing Club, you know, post sketches, post your work in progress. Uh, let us give you encouragement and feedback and motivation and ideas on, you know, what to tweak, what to move around. Basically, together we are stronger. Together we co-create and we help each other rise and be better artists. All the resources that I mentioned during the demo are linked in the description of the video so you can go ahead and check them out. So yeah, keep practicing. Download my free mini course at tatianadenis.com forward slash mini course where you can get, you know, a bird's eye version view of this process, not as in depth, but, you know, it, it will get you started for sure. So tatianadenis.com forward slash mini course. And if you are ready for taking your art next level, if you want to monetize your art, if you want to create cute products with your art, you know, like stuff like this. So this is Tokidoki, but we can create this with our art using print on demand services without having to produce them in our living room. So if you are ready to really polish your art, to go really systematically step by step by step from the very beginning to, you know, mastery, then I invite you to check out the Kawaii Drawing Club. It's our monthly membership where we create Kawaii art, we make products with it, and we sell them online with print and demand services. And this is pretty much our monthly uh, pace at the Kawaii Drawing Club. So on week one, we have a drawing tutorial. On week two, we do a drawing date, which is a live co-working session where we create art together. And this is your chance to get feedback on your art. So you can bring your drawings, you can work on your business stuff, you can ask me anything, it's a co-working session. Then on week three, we have a marketing tutorial. I often invite experts in the field to do this part. And I also teach, you know, like just the other month we did how to set up your Printful store, you know, Printful, yeah, because there's so many services. Uh, so like how to take your image and actually go step by step by step and from the image to the part where it's available for your customers for sale. You know, there's a lot of technical details like shipping and pricing and all that stuff. Uh, so I show how to do that. So that's an example. And then in week four, we have a mindset magic talk and a live Q&A. So this is a live session where um, I present about an aspect of being an artist from the mindset perspective because a lot of the time we get stuck because there's something in our head that's telling us, you know, that is putting brakes uh, or like sticks into our wheels. Imagine if you sit down to draw and you have this little voice in your head that says, oh, it's not gonna turn out good. Or I could never be as good as, you know, blah, 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 whatever artist that you admire. Like, or you, if you tell yourself, I have a creative block, like, or let's say you are having a creative block. Like, so there are techniques and steps to really get beyond that using mindset. 
Um, so that's week four, which is a critical part of being an artist. And also every quarter I invite a life coach school certified coach to do mindset coaching with our members. So it's like a hot seat. If you want to be coached by the certified coach, you can volunteer and bring, you know, your questions and right there will actually work through your roadblock, through your challenge. And then you, you can just create openly without, you know, without having these barriers. Uh, and then next month we begin again. So every month we do this thing where we draw, we publish the product, you know, and it starts to rank. It starts to be in front of your customers. It's a beautiful, beautiful cycle and it is a proven formula for success. If this is resonating with you, if you're saying, yes, I want this for myself, then check out the Kawaii Drawing Club, kawaiidrawingclub.com. I would love to co-create with you to see your journey, to see your artistic unfolding and to really get to know you on a very deep level. Keep creating. Keep sharing your art. Keep being a bold, confident artist that you are. I'm sending you so much love and I will see you in the next video.